What it do, T Squad? It's me, Keish, and I am here with my all T all shade, Real Housewives of New York City, season 14, episode 14 review. Last night was the season finale episode. The reunion part one will be up next week. And I have already taken pics in my reunion look. Yes, I finally am back with reunion looks for you guys. Already shot the pictures and everything. So cannot wait for you guys to see what I came to the reunion with, okay? Because I feel like I was best dressed. I feel like I slayed the girls, okay? I don't feel like none of them, okay, had anything on my look, okay? So wait till y'all see it, okay? <laughs> Can't wait for y'all to see it. Also, tomorrow I will be dropping my Real Housewives of New York confessional looks fashion killer video, okay? Get ready for it as well. All right. So in the season finale episode, Brynn... Uh, psychic tells her that she's stuck between two friends. And I was like, girl, did you already talk to him about this? Because how he know that? Like, what's going on? I need more background information because she is stuck between two friends, which is uh, Cy and Jessel. So Aaron and Uba go do bumper cars and their relationship is back on the mend. And it's very reminiscent to episode one when they met up in the park. Aaron and her talk and Aaron says that she feels bad for Pavit. And uh, I was like, yeah, because y'all ran that man in the ringer all up in his business about some flight mileage. Like, why do you care? So Aaron was like, it was the time to say something lovely about your wife when, you know, all the men were saying what made them know that their wife was the one. But I'm like, Aaron, your husband said the same thing he said about Jessel. He made everything about him. Just like Pavit. If that's the case, you in the same boat, my love. Shut up. So, Uber brings up what David said to her and how she kind of felt like offended that he would ask her and put her on the spot about why she ain't got no man pretty much. And I hate when dudes do that. I really honestly do. Because what makes you, what you mean why I ain't got no man? Obviously, I ain't found the per, my person yet. You know what I'm saying? It ain't got nothing to do with me. How about the fact that I just ain't met nobody that I want to be with or that's on my level or that I connect with? You know, it's a lot of accomplished women like myself who are, you know, beautiful, sophisticated got their own stuff going on, financially stable. And it's a lot, it's intimidating to a lot of men because either they can't match what you bring to the table, you know what I'm saying? Or they feel inadequate or there's some jealousy there with you being in the spotlight. It's a lot that go along when you are a powerful woman. So I thought that that was a, you know, a bit tacky of David to say that. So um, Uba reiterates that Sai is the only person who knows about her little boo thing in her confessional, okay? That plays a big part in what happens in the end of the episode. So, Brynn and Sai link up to uh, help her pick out a tree for her Mimi in Central Park. They find a spot, they're going to do a willow tree for her grandmother. It was a beautiful spot, beautiful scene. I loved it. Jessel has a photo shoot for her ready to wear in jewelry line in Jenna's apartment. And I absolutely love the pieces. Loved them, loved them, loved them. Um, Uber visits and tells her what Brynn and Jenna told her, Cy and Aaron said about Pavi saying she let him do whatever. And, you know, he walked around not wearing his wedding ring. And Uba in her confession was like, personally, I don't get in people's marriages. I don't get in people's children. It's not my business. Weak people fight that way. Come on, Uba. If you don't uh, tell the truth to shame the devil, because why are y'all are so invested? I understand they're on a reality show and they got to create some type of drama. And I guess this is the drama, especially when we I don't have to focus on my relationship and the things that I got going on with my husband. But it's just like, okay, he don't wear his wedding ring. You know how many men that do wear their wedding ring that still cheat? <laughs> like, don't know, women don't care about whether or not a man wear a wedding ring or not. If they want to sleep with a married man, they're going to do it. They don't care, and neither does the man. If that's the case, like, what? So, Jessel doesn't know if she's going to address her 
issue situations with Aaron and Cy at Brian's birthday party. I was like, you better. I mean, we all knew she was going to have to because it's the season finale episode. And that's what the parties are for, for all the ladies to hash out whatever grievances they have in the last episode. So Cy and Aaron go mass shopping and Cy says that she's still annoyed with Jessel. And I was like, why? Why? For somebody you don't care about and so insignificant, why are you so pressed by this lady? So Cy was like, she called you her, my pet parrot. And Aaron was like, oh my God, that's so rude. Like what? I didn't even do anything to her. Girl, you've been talking about her just as much as Cy has. Stop trying to act like you don't know where this is coming from. So Aaron tells her that Uber brought up David asking why she isn't married. And you could tell Cy was uncomfortable with the fact that Uba felt offended by something her husband did. And so to like try to mask it and play it off, she was like, she's fine. She's in a good place. She's dating someone. And she realized that she let it slip and she couldn't backtrack it at that point. And I was like, <laughs> no, not to tell you nothing, jabber mouth. So, Cy, however, does not tell Aaron in that moment who the person is or any information because she was like, um, it ain't, you know, my business or my story to tell. And in her confessional, she said that she felt so bad because she knew that she had spoke too much in that moment. Mind you, Aaron is a little salty and her feelings is hurt because she wondering like, why just, I mean, why uh, Uber told Cy and didn't tell her considering the fact that they're supposed to be quote unquote closer. One thing about Aaron is she going to make everything about her. Like, oh my God, she is so self-absorbed. Like that whole time she was standing there stewing. Like, I can't believe she didn't tell me. Oh my God, does she like Cy more than she like me? Oh my God, what am I going to do? It's like, girl, calm down. So while they sitting up there talking about everybody else's relationships, mind you, the tea on the street about Cy is that when Cy was working at the bar, years ago as a bartender, the word on the curb is that the bar she was working at was allegedly David's bar. And she used to work for David and David was married. And that they started having an affair. So here's the information I found on the internet. And I'm gonna give y'all my personal opinion. So the word on the street is that Cy and her husband, David Craig, had an affair while he was married to his first wife. The two allegedly met at Swim Bar when Cy bartended for David, who owned the bar. Even though this is an unverified rumor, it sure got tongues wagging. Cy told viewers that she and David have been married for 14 years after tying the knot in a private ceremony back in 2009. However, some boiling hot tea has recently been spilled after fans did a deep dive into Cy De Silva's marriage to find more information. Followers via Reddit noted that they found receipts on Answer Troy, A N C E. T-R-O-Y dot com showing Cy lied about their wedding day. It looks like the couple married at the courthouse in 2017, but first met in 2009. Cy has tripped over her own lies as she once stated she was married in 2009. However, in another conversation, shared her children were present at her wedding. Both her daughter and son were born in 2012 and 2017. Via Cy's YouTube channel, she joked that David knew that she was the one because she became pregnant. At As Phaedra Parks would say, the math ain't mathing. During the video, David remembers their first meeting at the Swim Up Bar. He shared that Cy was hungover. I watched this video personally about two years ago. He shared that Cy was hungover and he was there due to a work trip after selling his marketing company. All these stories are giving me whiplash. I remember uh, watching that video because I told you guys that I have been an avid fan of Cy's YouTube channel and her Instagram, Scout the City. And when I fell in love with her channel, I then went back all the way to like her beginning videos. And she and David, uh, without showing his face, because that was during the time when she wasn't showing his face, um, they sat down and did like a How We Met Each Other video. And she said that she was drunk at the bar. And her head was down like on the counter and he said like something slick to her and then that's how they got to talking or whatever. And, and I don't remember if it was in that video particularly or if it was in another video 
a converse it, it was something said to the effect about David's other kids or kid duh and I was like he got another kid but it was never spoken of again on size YouTube channel you've never seen any other children any other children have never been mentioned ever again um you never see any photographs of these children holidays or whatever but I remember on this particular episode on her YouTube channel it was a mention very quickly that he had other children older kids so I need more information because Miss Mamas like what's going on was he married when you met him does he have older children if so why don't you acknowledge them why is there, why are they never present? Why or do you never talk about them? Why have we never seen them? Do they not like you? Like what's going on? Okay. This is what we needed to be talking about this season. And hopefully uh, the girls bring it up next season because you doing a lot for somebody to have these type of skeletons in a closet, Miss Mama. And I loved Cy up until seeing her on this show. And I was so worried that her being on this show was going to make me dislike her. Cause you, you know, we knew that we were going to see different sides of people. And yeah, it just, this wasn't a good look girl. It was not a good look, but yeah, we need to tee on that. Does David got older kids? How they feel about you? Why don't y'all acknowledge these kids? Why hasn't he acknowledged it? Why didn't y'all acknowledge that he has kids on this show? Why y'all just trying to make it seem like it's the two that y'all got together? What is going on? I need answers ASAP, okay? So, Jessel and Pavit talk about the girls, okay? And Jessel was like, she doesn't need to talk about my marriage, talking about Aaron. She can literally sit in her sad Tribeca corner <laughs> and fixate on our lives. She's like effing obsessed. It's like Eminem Stein right now, like crazy Looney Tune. She's a effing parrot. She has no mind of her own. She doesn't have the capacity to think for herself. And I was like, ooh, Jessel, these are all the things you need to be saying to these girls faces girl like you got good comebacks when you like talking to somebody else or in your confessional but in the moment you don't really be giving it the way you're supposed to so she says that she's gonna ignore a side though like she don't like me I don't like her I ain't even got nothing to say but some behind the scenes he also came out about Jessel as well well the tea is about Jessel that apparently she and Pavit and the kids moved to New York City literally a month before filming began. They had just bought a few months prior, um, like a, a million something dollar worth of uh, home in Dallas, Texas, where they're from. I guess she got booked for the show. And then when she got booked for the show, she said they found the, the T said that they found the house, the apartment that they're living in took it off the market and moved to New York. The house that they have in Dallas is now up on the market as of this year. Okay. Mind you, they started filming last year in 2022. So as of March, 2023, the house in Dallas is up for sale. So it makes sense to why she said that comment about Tribeca being up and coming because she doesn't know anything about New York. So now it all makes sense on Jessel and Pavit. So, um, it's the day of Brynn's birthday party. She arrives to her venue and it's gorgeous. It's filled with white cream balloons and everything. She has on this like sparkly uh, dress with the little lingerie underneath. Really cute outfit. Brynn gets her birthday wish and gets a kiss from Jen. And I was like, Jenna. And I was like, girl, I would have rather got a gift. <laughs> that little whack dry kiss. Like, okay. Ugh. So, when David sees Uba, he immediately takes her to the side and apologizes for asking her about, does she have a man, this, that, and the third. And she was like, you know, it's not a problem, whatever. And she whispers in his ear, I'm good. I'm good. Like basically hinting that I got a boot thing. But, but by the way that he responded, that should have let her know that he already knew you had a boo thing, which should have then let you know that Sada opened her mouth and pillow talked to her husband about what you told her. Y'all got to start paying attention. So Jessel and Pavit arrives and she speaks to the girl. She was like, hi, everybody. And 
was like, okay, I'm about to go get a drink and walks off. Like she was very kind of like, okay, I spoke. I did what I was supposed to do and um, let me walk away. Here go Aaron. No hug, no warm hello. Why would she? And Sa was like, who cares? So then Aaron run over to her husband, Abe, talking about some Jessel didn't speak to me. She did speak to you. What you mad because she went, hey, Aaron, oh my God, you look so great. All that fake crap. No, she didn't. You I, Honestly, I wouldn't even spoke to now one of y'all, to be honest. So then Aaron goes over to Jessel and was like, you know, why didn't you speak to me? What did I do to you? Like, girl, stop trying to act like you don't know that she be talking crap about this lady. So Jessel was like, I heard you were saying all this ish about my husband. Like he doesn't wear a ring. He goes to Vietnam and something like is off with that. And Aaron was like, that's not true. All I do is say what I think constantly. You just told on yourself because that is what you did. Like, and that is your topic of conversation between you and Cy. Making fun of this girl marriage and questioning their marriage and fidelity and all of these things. So Sai ends up walking over. And at first I was like, Sai, why are you walking over here joining a conversation when you have made it utterly clear that you can't stand Jessel? So she get on your nerves and you don't want to be friends with her. So why are you walking over here joining this conversation? But then I had to remember that, okay, a producer told her, okay, you need to go over there and join that conversation. Okay, so I'm gonna let you slide. So um, Jessa was like, Brian told me the stuff you were saying about my husband. And then she turns to Sai and was like, and just FYI, I heard you don't like me. And Sai was like, it's not that I don't like you. It's just that I don't want to be best friends with you. And Jessa was like, okay, I don't want to be best friends with you either. Okay, that's established. Let's go get a drink. Like, Jessa was like, okay, girls, it's fine. It, it is what it is. So Aaron and Jessa then walk up to the bar and have a conversation one-on-one. And... Aaron was like, I truly have tried with you lately to be like nice and okay, but I've heard horrible things, but it doesn't make me lash out like you. I've heard you have a whole checklist about me. First of all, what you mean you have really tried her lately to be nice to me? You ain't got to try to do nothing if you don't want to. How about that? The fact that you have to try to be nice to me, girl, get out of my face. And then I've heard horrible things uh, that you've said about me. Girl, don't try to switch this around and try to make it seem like you the victim when y'all have literally been sitting up here trashing my marriage. Ain't nothing that I've said worse than that. So let's not go there. So Jessel then disappoints me. When Aaron says, I've heard you got a whole checklist about me. Jessel says, that's so psychotic. And no, I don't do that. So all y'all just lying. All y'all some punks. Because you do. What? So then Aaron was like, to call me a pet parrot numerous times is ridiculous. Jessel smirks at that one. <laughs> like she didn't deny that one. So... Aaron um, was like, why are you putting me with Cy? We're not the same person. No, y'all not the same person, but y'all do the same mess. And y'all are cohorts in this. So Brynn tells Jessel that she needs to stand up for herself better and check these helpers. And Jessel was like, I did check her. I did. I did do it. But Brynn is like, girl, no, you need to go harder so they get off on your back. Like, you need to cuss these helpers out. And what Brynn is telling her is true, you know, because Jessel don't know how to read and she don't know how to really like get in there and assert herself. So let me point something out to y'all. Brynn came to work this season finale episode. If it wasn't for Z uh, for Brynn, this season finale episode would have been a snooze fest because Jen, I mean, Brynn said, okay, I know the other girls ain't going to do it. So I have to do, I have to create the drama and the mess to make sure that this season at least goes off with some type of drama and confrontation. Jenna got her, I mean, Brynn got her kiss from Jenna. She then is going to, at this point, start the drama between Isaiah and, Pivot. <laughs> and then she gonna start more drama. Brynn clocked in and I gotta give it to her. So um Brynn then tells the whole group that she wants everybody to air out their grievances. So you know the producer's like, okay, this is how we gonna get this stuff rolling. I need for you to do this. So Sai was like, why would we do that at a party? Like make it make sense. And I'm looking like, Sai, you're on a reality show. Wake up. Okay, you're on a reality show, okay? So, uh, Brynn was like, there is something that has personally ran through my family. Pavi, I was a little thrown off when you called Cy bipolar. And Pavi was sitting there like, did this happen? You just told me 
under the bus? I was like, yep, because it's the season finale episode. Got to get kicked. Got to get stuff started. So Poppy was like, I mean, I didn't mean that. And Sai in her confession was like, I'm definitely not bipolar. And it's offensive, especially when my mother was. Now, yes, that was wrong. That was so wrong of him to say that about her, especially with us knowing, you know, how her mom struggled and everything like that. So that really was offensive. And, you know, you ain't supposed to say stuff like that nowadays. So um, Brent was like, I told him to take it back. And he said, on record, I take it back. But she's just being an F and B. <laughs> Poppy did his confession was like, yeah, I said it because she is. <laughs> So Sai was like, don't confuse being a B with being honest. I'm straightforward with your wife. Sometimes she lies and says things that don't make sense to me. So Sai mentions the Vietnam situation and uh, the, what was it? The Vietnam, yeah, Sai mentioned the Vietnam situation. And so Jess was like, girl, who cares? And Sai was like, no, no one gives a F, Jess all. And Jess was like, girl, hold up, don't yell at me. And so I was like, obviously I have to yell at you if you're not going to be, if you're not going to effing comprehend what I'm saying. And it's like, you doing all this screaming and hollering and for what? It's not even that deep. And secondly, you only doing this because you know Jessel is not going to fight back with you like that. Because you ain't going to dare step to Uber like that. You've already made that clear. You don't want that smoke with her. And I don't like people like that. They're pick and choose who they want to get buck with. Bye, Sai. Please, Sai. Stop. So, Jess was like, don't effing raise your voice at me. So, Sai then says that you lied about him saying he was leaving in a week to go to Vietnam. And then, um, uh, come to find out he didn't have a ticket. Once again, producers play it back and neither one of them lied. Pava didn't lie, nor did Jessel lie. When Jessel had that conversation with Sai, she said he's going to be leaving in a few weeks. Maybe you need to get a Q-tip and clean out your ear. She said a few weeks, not that week. So you're wrong and you mad about nothing. Then with Pavit, he didn't lie about not having a ticket. He didn't have a date. Once again, you selecting to hear what you want to hear. And I hope at the reunion, you feel stupid and you apologize because you didn't listen. So you mad about nothing. You mad at yourself, honestly. <laughs> Like, and if you go to this reunion standing, standing on not listening, you're going to make yourself look even dumber, Sai. So I hope that you at least go to the reunion like, yo, I was wrong. I was 100% wrong because you didn't have no reason to be mad at this lady. She didn't lie to you, didn't do nothing to you. You mad at yourself. So, um, Uber breaks up the argument. Jessel then goes over to David and was like, can you get your wife to like me again? Jessel, this is when you, 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 you get a L. Because you too old to be caring about whether or not somebody want to like you. And then I'm going to be going over to nobody's husband. Do you make her like me again? This is why she don't respect you. So Sa comes over once again and joins the conversation. Because it's like some why you over here talking to my husband type of time. So uh, Jessel was like, you know, it's hard for me to open up. And... Sai and Aaron then decide to surprise her with a joke with Aaron coming out with a parrot mask on and was like, let me introduce you to my pet parrot. It was very funny. It broke the ice between the ladies. And it was like, okay, we finally getting a little bit of clarity here. Everything is kind of lightening up. So Jenna tells David that she isn't as fearless as the other women. And I'm like, let me tell you something, Jenna Lyons. I'm so sick of you in this what was me storyline. Like, girl. Stop acting like you Forrest Gump. Please stop. It's so, ugh, it's annoying. I hate people that always be on there. I'm not as confident. I'm not as weak. I'm, I'm not as pretty. Like, girl, shut up. I'm sick of it. And even so, I was like, you know, it really bothers me and it makes me mad because I look at you and it's just like, girl, like, you're that girl. Stop. So, Sa so tells Jessel they need to get over it. Like, at this point, she was like, we need to get over it. Yeah, sometimes I don't like you. Hell, Aaron, sometimes I don't like you. But we need to get over it. So they decide they're going to work through it. So Uba's boo thing calls her. And she was like, okay, give me a minute. I'm going to call you right back or whatever. Brian peeps that it was her boo thing that called and was like, Uba, I heard you got a man in Connecticut. (laughs) 
Brian clocked in and she deserves overtime. Yes, Brian. So Cy was like, Brian, that's effed up. Don't do that. No, it ain't effed up. You parted your beak and told that girl business when she told you not to. So all of this falls back on you, my love. So Uba just sitting there trying to play it off. And she was like, what, what are you talking about, Connecticut? Where is Connecticut? Producers play it back when she said she goes to Connecticut plenty of times. Like, Uba, you didn't play it off correctly. Um, so after that, Erin reveals in her confessional that she and Cy took Brynn out for her birthday. And Cy basically told them all the tea on Uba's man. But basically swore that they made them swear that they wouldn't, you know, go back and tell nobody else. It was just going to stay between them. But you were wrong. Like, how old are you, girl? You are not in the second grade no more. You need to learn how to keep your mouth shut. Like, why is you running back and telling these girls something that she told you to keep to herself? I mean, keep to, to keep to yourself. It was already bad that you had already mentioned the fact that she had a man in front of Aaron. Then you take it up a notch and not only tell Aaron all the girl business, but you tell Brynn all the girl business. You were the one in the wrong in this situation. Flat out. Brynn, Aaron, no. Innocent bystanders in my eyes. You're the one that was in the wrong. So, um, Cy was like, that's someone's personal business. And Uba like, if you mention Connecticut, I will circumcise you, okay? She... <laughs> She says that to, uh, did she say that to Cy or did she say that to Brynn? I think she said it to Brynn. So um, at this point, Uber decides she about to leave because she mad. She pissed off, but she's mad with Brynn. How are you mad with Brynn when she just repeating something that she was told? Like, you're mad at Cy. Come on now. So Uber says to Cy before she leaves, I heard you said it on camera. So I was like, I never said where. I said, you're dating someone and it's not my business. Yeah, that's what you said on camera, but you shouldn't even say it that much. And then you're not telling her that off camera, you went back and told all the girls her business. So Brian comes over and was like, you told me Connecticut. How would I know it was Connecticut? And Cy denies it and was like, I was drinking that night. And even if I did say it, that's somebody else's business. Okay, you need to be saying that to yourself, not me. <laughs> like what? So Brian was like, um... So I was like, you know, it was, uh, no, Brynn was like, it was on camera. It was on camera. She said it to Aaron on camera. And here goes, it was not on camera. If you have an effing happy birthday, you asshole, and she leaves or whatever, man. And I'm like, how you mad at her because you ran your mouth? Make it make sense. And all the screaming in the world ain't going to help nothing because you sitting up there looking like the Wicked Witch of the West. Like, side, stop. You're the villain in this situation. So she rushes outside and catches Uber and was like, I'm so sorry, um, and Uber was like, okay, girl, just stop talking about it on camera. Like, just shut up. And all the rest of the girls leave and Brynn is just there with her other home girls or whatever, kicking it for her birthday and the episode goes off. Child, like I said, if Brynn didn't clock in, I don't know what kind of season finale we would have had. Um, overall, I'm going to give season 14 of Real Housewives of New York I'm going to give it a C plus. And this is why. I love the fact that we have a multicultural cast. Um, I'm happy that Roni is back because I feel like New York is the the next housewife. Like it's the it's one of the housewives within itself. Um, I love the fashion. I loved all the places that we got to see. I love this cast. The only thing that I feel is missing from this cast is a, like um, Ebony Williams says, is that force multiplier. Brynn is almost that, but she ain't really punching you in the face with it. We need a troublemaker in this cast. Okay. We need somebody that's going to get it popping. We need somebody that's going to be really unapologetic. You know what I'm saying? We need a Kenya Moore on this show. We need a Tamara judge on this show. Okay. We need that person on this show we need a nene leaks we need a over the top ramona singer type character a sonia morgan type character we need somebody that's gonna let loose and let have okay that's the only thing missing from the roni cast i think they need to cast one more woman 
and maybe a friend of, okay? But we need somebody that's going to come and get it crack a lacking, okay, with these girls. Um, I wouldn't mind if they brought back um, the white girl from uh, Roni, the edgy one. Y'all know who I'm talking about, blonde hair, the edgy, young one. Y'all know who I'm talking about, I can't think of her name right now. I wouldn't mind if she came back, but I hate to say it like I loved when she was drunk and I know she's an alcoholic, but I love when she was drinking, but whatever. Bring her back or bring somebody else back. Like we need somebody that's going to get it popping. Okay. That's one thing that this cast lacks. And I, another thing that I think that this cast lacks is that they're aware of the cameras and they were really selective with what they were going to share. They didn't really get down in the mud, AKA, just so your ass just moved here. You ain't even from New York. Side, your husband was allegedly married when you met him and y'all was having fun. He got a whole family that he don't even acknowledge and y'all don't know. Like, we need to get to that bit of the tea. We need somebody that's going to really go there and bring it out. One thing that I did enjoy about this season is that they didn't just come in starting stupid beefs with one another. Everything happened organically. It wasn't forced, which I really loved about this cast. Um, but yeah, I just feel like it's missing that one thing. And if they get that one thing for next season, it'll be great. Honestly, bring back two of the OGs. There, I said it. Bring back two of the OGs. That's what's needed. Bring back the Countess and Sonya. They will loosen the girls up. They know the game. They're not uh, unafraid to get drunk and do whatever on camera. Like, they're going to have a good time. We need that type of energy on this type of show. Bring back Sonia and Luann. Bravo, listen to me. Bring them back. Bring them back. Add them to the show. We got a dynamic cast because they're going to get the party started. Okay? They're going to get the party started. All right? That's what needs to happen for next season. So, yeah, I give this season a C plus. I really enjoyed it. I want to say my MVP of this season for me will have to be Bryn and then second place Uba. I really like both of them. I know a lot of people didn't really care for Bryn. They felt like she was a try hard with all the sexy stuff. But I feel like that's honestly truly her. And I like her personality. I think she's fun. I think she's bubbly. I think she, she does have insecurities and demons and all of that things. But I really like Bryn. She was very needed for this cast. Um, my least favorite person of this season would have to be Cy and Aaron, of course. I'm very disappointed with Cy. Um, I started off this season not liking Jessel. She rubbed me the wrong way in the beginning. But as the season went on, I grew to like Jessel a lot. A lot of people were saying that she's like the breakout star of this season. No, she's not. She's not. The only reason why people are going up for Jessel is because she was getting picked on. But other than that, what did Jessel bring to the show? Absolutely nothing. Nothing, child. Nothing. Um, but yeah, and honestly, Jenna can go. Jenna can go. She's boring. She's boring. She's not gonna do nothing. She play victim. She can go. This is not the the, the stage for her. Boot her and bring back Sonia and Luann. Yeah. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about the season finale episode. Let's talk about it all down below in the comment section. You guys get ready to see my reunion outfit next week. Oh, I slayed the game. Okay, slayed them. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, be on the lookout tomorrow for my Real Housewives of New York confessional looks, fashion killer video. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.